I got up with this song on my mind this morning on my heart. I'll have a new life. One day we're going to be where there's no more pain, no more sorrow, no more strife, no more hurt feelings, no more broken hearts, no more deaths. I'm anxious.
the goodness of God this morning? Has He been good to you? Has He been faithful to you? You know, raise your hands up and just thank Him for what He's doing in your life, Lord. And while we have our hands raised, Father, right now, we thank You for what You're doing in our lives. We thank You for Your presence in our lives. Thank You for Your faithfulness, Your guidance, Lord, Your goodness. Lord, we thank You that You run after us, Lord. You never give up on us. Lord, right now, we ask for a special blessing, a special anointing upon Brother Todd this morning, Lord, as he brings forth the Word of God, Lord. We ask for right now to just bless him in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. From Flatwoods, Kentucky, from Fort Collins, Colorado, Brother Dr. Todd Bailey. I tease him. I said, you look like I've been up from the hell storm when I've done. It's so good to see everybody. These are these trips that I take that I don't feel like I'm on the road. Let's go to the other side of the county to see friends and family. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know where your twin lives in lovely Colorado. My Lord, I looked over there and I thought, I didn't know you were following me. I had my vehicle work on the other day. I'm serious. Split image almost. Same thing. You got a beard? Amen. Well, thank you. Pastor, pastor, prophet, evangelist. Miss Jerry Ann. No. Praise the Lord. You know this, I, you know the people ask me sometimes, they said, aren't you upset about whatever things happening? I said, nope. They said, I said, I'm concerned. I'm trying to be Consciously aware. You know, Jesus sort of rebuked the crowd one time. And he rebuked the Pharisees over and over and over. Amen. He says, you can look at the skies and determine the weather, but you can't even discern the time you're living in. But then he goes another step further and he says, the sons of Issachar. They did not just understand the times that they lived in. They learned to cooperate with God during those times. And a lot of times if we don't watch it, we will rebuke. And, and learn how to resist the devil in the obvious, and we'll get deceived in the subtle. And a lot of times, instead of distractions, it becomes attractions. Amen? And I believe the Lord's coming back, and you know, I used the illustration here before that, you know, there was a guy who had a rope about 40 feet across his uh, stage, and it was white, but only about three or four inches of it on one end was red. And he held up the red part, and he said, this is your life. Whether you live to be 80, 100, or 120 years, this is your life right here. And what you do in the red, and he went like this, affects eternity. Amen? He says, I like how he said it. He said, no, he wasn't against retirement. He wasn't against people, you know, enjoying their life and all this. But he made a great point. He said, here's your life. You were born here and you'll die here. <coughs> he said, but what we do is we work all the way through here so we can take this little bit of time right here and just go and do nothing and have fun and relax and, and he said but when we can be impacting eternity amen I've learned to relax I like to go to the beach I like to sit down and relax and do different things like that Jesus he went to certain places to relax you know he went you know a lot of people think I'm going to tell you this I believe if Jesus was alive today he would have a really nice house probably around somewhere next to the beach. Amen? <laughs> and he wouldn't feel guilty about it. But the key is, he said, remember this, he said, I must be about my father's business. Amen? And I believe we're living in a time, and I love how y'all do the decrees. If you remind me, I got some that I do that pray over nothing but your children and your descendants. It takes like 40 seconds. And you just make these proclamations. Because if you don't speak, you lose by default. Your voice is your address in the spirit. The only thing that will touch etern uh, the spiritual and the natural at the same time is the words of your mouth. Yes. Come on now. Yeah. You know, the, it, there's a time for you to be silent before the Lord and be still and know He's God. But then there's a time that you stand up and you proclaim a decree. Mm -hmm. A while back, the Lord ministered to me, and I believe He said this almost word for word. He said, stop talking about what is happening and start saying what you want to see happening. 
And I thought, well, I gotta, I gotta use my voice. Your choice is your voice, amen? So, but anyway, with that being said, I want to minister on something today. I want to talk about, we, we're trying to work on a title. I'm not really good on titles, but I, I left it up to her, amen? You know, if she says how to eat marshmallows three times a day or something, that, that's going to be the sermon title, amen? No. But I want to talk about how to effectively use the Word of God. Because a lot of times if we don't watch it, I'm going to read two scriptures to you. One is in Hebrews 2.1. And the other one's 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2. I'm throwing her a curve back there. Listen to this. It says, since all this is true, we ought to pay much closer attention than ever to the truths which we have heard, lest in any way we drift past them and slip away. How many knows faith and muscle are the same in this essence? It either grows or goes. It doesn't have a status. I remember my... Uh, nephew, he's about 30 now, but when he was younger, he was really good on cage fighting. He won a couple belts. and I mean, he was just, man, he looked like a waffle iron with rebar. Just walked around like this. <laughs> Hardly no body fat. I mean, he had muscles in his earlobes, amen? You know what I said to him? It will pass. <laughs> it will pass, amen? So faith either grows or goes. It never stays the same. So when we get in the Word, it's one thing to know it, but you've got to continue in it. Amen? Now turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 and 2, when Paul was writing to the body of Christ called the Corinthians. He said, and now let me remind you, since it may have escaped you, brethren. Now is, who's he talking to here? The church, you and I, believers. He said, of the gospel, the glad tidings of salvation, which I proclaim to you, which you welcome and have accepted and upon your faith rest. Now, how many knows faith doesn't come by having heard? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's a, if, it's not, if it's not present tense, it's not faith. See, a lot of times if we don't watch it, we'll do what the children of Israel did. They were trying to eat uh, uh, old manna or trying an old method to go into a new land. God told Moses to speak to the rock, not hit it. But he was relying on something that was familiar to him. And he ended up just going through the motions. And he, guess what? He said, you're trying to, basically, you're trying to know method to go to the new land. So let's look at verse 2. And by which you are saved, if you hold fast and keep firmly what I preach to you, unless you have believed at first without effect and all for nothing. In other words, what he was saying here was this. I came to you. I preached you the gospel. You heard it. Some of you received it. Now, it's a key word, received. And some of you got saved by it. But if you don't keep in remembrance what I preached to you, all my preaching was useless. I'll give you two examples. James 1 says that we are to continue in the word. Continue. In other words, he said, to be not doers of the word only. I mean, hearers only, but be doers of the word. You know, I'm working on a message called uh, about the two things I believe that in time, fear not and be not deceived. And I'm just amazed what they actually mean when you get into the scripture. First of all, I know what that means. A lot of people don't realize you cannot be deceived when you, uh, you don't know that you're being deceived when you're being deceived. Because if you know you're being deceived, you're no longer deceived. And one of the greatest, biggest deceptions in the end times, I believe, you can take this with a grain of salt. Or is I believe that it's going to be a self-inflicted deception. A lot of believers are going to be self-deceived. Why? We're going to learn to be here. Now, I'm not judging anybody. I'm just saying it's about me. Because I had to check myself every day. Amen? Amen. Come on. I can't even get my neighbor's dog to go back in the yard. Amen? <laughs> or out of my yard. So I'm not going to try to control anybody else. <laughs> But what I've learned is, is uh, uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. It was really good. Let me stand over here again. Where, 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 that's where I got the thought. Amen. Self-inflation. Huh? Self-inflation. Yeah, Self-inflation. That's what it feels like right now. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that, thank you. You get the gold star and you get a silver one. Amen. <laughs> An action produced a reaction. No, I'm just both gold stars. Okay, what was it again? Deceive? <laughs> okay, it's one of the biggest deceptions, I believe, is self-imposed upon either believers or unbelievers. You know what it is? Is when we remain hearers and we stop becoming doers. 
And the initial act of faith is speaking the Word of God. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. The initial act of faith is speaking. If you're not speaking, somebody asked me one day, said, how do you really know somebody believes something? I said, their mouth will move. 1 Corinthians 4.13, I believe it is. I believe, therefore, I speak. As a man thinks in his heart, heart so is he, but out of the heart, the out of the abundance of the the speaks. Think, believe, speak. When you get those synchronized, guess what? You'll start experiencing the promises of God. Because why? Now your sinfulness of mind, your heart has not bitter or sweet water in it. And guess what? You don't have you, you have the same flow coming out of your mouth. See, what's in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. That's why Jesus said to Jairus, he, he said, fear not, only believe. Well, Jairus just spoke faith like nobody else spoke. If you will come, my daughter shall be made whole. And a servant came and said, don't trouble the master anymore. Your daughter's dead. Mark 4, 24, 25. He said, take heed. What's that mean? You better listen to me. Because I'm about ready to say something important. Amen. Or when he says, barely, barely, I say to you. Or if you see the word therefore, you need to see why it's there for. Amen. Come on. Yeah. All right. I'm getting off track here. I better, I better just get back. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Let's look at verse 11 through 18. I want to talk about today about how to effectively use the Word of God. Amen. How to effectively use the Word of God. How many knows that you're not going to turn your car keys or your new car over to your new 16-year-old child? They say, go for it. You're not going to give them a gun. Sure, anybody can get lucky and hit a bullseye, maybe one out of 100 or 500, but that's a novice. But to be an expert, you, how I many know, you know people say, well, practice makes perfect. I said, no, it doesn't. You can do it wrong 100 times, doesn't mean you're going to do it right the next. All right. I got a friend of mine, he played professional football, and I said, what did you do? He said, I practiced every week, every month. I did the basics until I become a professional at it. So I've learned that perfect practice makes perfect. See, you and I are to take up our cross every day, but we're also to get our daily bread. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. So don't, don't eat old manna. God's got you fresh stuff every day. And all I'm doing is this. I'm not, pre listen, I'm not preaching that anybody knows nothing and I know it all. I'm not doing that. I know you all been well ministered here too. But one of the biggest things when you read the book of Corinthians is, how many knows there was two books in Corinthians? Did you know there was never three? There's 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, but there was never 3 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, he went and taught them, and then the 2 Corinthians, they wrote him, and they, they was telling him different things like this, and they were saying, you know, we got all these problems now, we got this guy doing this, and we got this, and I, all these different things. Well, how many of those Paul wrote them back and told them all the things he went through? Mm -hmm. but, he, but there was one thing in there in 2 Corinthians, and he said, in reference to 1 Corinthians to him. And guess what? He said, I'm just reminding you of what you already know. Hey, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's why he said in Hebrews 2.1 and 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2, remember there's two key words in there. Remembrance. you got to bring these things back to remembrance. Just like James says, continue therein. Be not a forgetful hearer of the word, but be a doer. Then he goes on and on and it says, it says, be doers of word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And that phrase is with reasonings that are contradictive to the truth. The moment you sit back and analyze the word of God, you deceive yourself. You know, they was talking about a miracle. How many knows that you can't tell God how you want your miracle? You can step there and believe God, but you know what? We're trying to figure out how black cows eat green grass and get white milk. And God said, it doesn't matter how I do the process. You just got to believe that I am more than able to do it, and I'm your source. The clay never tells the potter what to do. John 8 says, to know the truth, what's truth? The Word of God. Thy word is truth. We know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We know the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He says continue in the truth. When you know the truth and continue in it, the truth will set you free. You ever try to push an old pickup and try to get it going? It seems like nothing's happening. It's not moving. Yes, it is. 
It's the same way that when you put a bag of popcorn in the microwave and you think nothing's popping after three minutes. Mine takes three minutes, 15 seconds. Everything happens in the last 15 seconds in the manifestation realm. But the first three minutes, something's happening, but you just don't see it yet. And that's what we got to do with the Word of God. Because sometimes, now listen, I'm going to try to smile the best I can. It, my, my son a while back said, Dad, it was a really good message. I said, Son, thank you. You're going to ride home today. Amen. <laughs> he said, But I got to tell you something. I already knew it. He said, But sometimes when you preach those serious messages, he says, You, you just look mad. <laughs> so, well, it's hard to smile when you have no lips. <laughs> Seriously, you have to smack me in the mouth and wait for the swelling to take place. <laughs> So I'm going to say some things here, and I'm not here to beat the sheep, I'm here to feed you, but I want to pro I, I, I want to do what Paul, uh, Paul told Timothy, like his mother Eunice and the grandmother Lois, I believe it was, I, I want to take a poker and poke up some of those embers and get them flamed again. Yes. Amen? We've gotten to some place, and you only can answer this when you look in the mirror in the morning, probably when you go to bed at night. But you're only the one that's going to have to answer this. I'm not here to judge you, because I'm not going to judge another man's servant. But I can judge you by your fruits, and fruits are uh, results of an inward action. Amen. Amen? You shall know them by their fruits. A while back, my son kept saying, Dad, I'm doing this. I'm taking care of it. All right, after two weeks, if you don't, I call the school. I'm going to get your teachers, and I'm going to find out why this is not happening, although you are saying it's happening. When two weeks, I, call, I got the teachers. Three weeks, I got it, Dad. I said, no, I don't want you to talk to me anymore about it. He said, why? Don't you believe me? I said, well, it's not that I don't believe you, but I trust you, but I'm verifying what you just said. And what you're saying is not matching with your behavior and your words. So here's what I want you to do. Stop telling me what you're going to do. Show me what you're going to do. And when I start seeing what you said before, then I'll go back believing what you said at the beginning. But until then, don't tell me what you're going to do until you do it. Because when I see the behavior matching what the words are saying, then I'm going to go back trusting what you say. But until then, don't tell me what you're going to do because I'm not seeing the results of what you say. Thank you for coming. Drive safely. Amen. I didn't plan all that, but that felt very good. Why did I say that? Because some of us grew up believing for our healing because we had no insurance. There was no, hardly any doctor around. Come on. There was not urgent care. There was not a prescription card. There was not all this. We didn't even know there was a deductible on our certain visits. You only went to the doctor when you were dead and somebody took you. <laughs> Come on, forget about owning two things of deodorant. You was just thankful to have one, and you used it every other day, and hoping nobody noticed, and you would wear the same shirt sometimes on odd days because you hoped the scent was still there. Come on, I've been there. I remember going to college and faking myself out. I got my old Boy Scout stuff out and I fixed stuff and I sat down and I thought, okay, today I'm going to eat vegetable soup with rice. The next day I ate rice with vegetable soup. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Come on. We, we, we were younger. We didn't have all these ailments and stuff. We know how to pronounce more medications now and we know how to take what, when, where, before we drive, after we drive, with what meal. You shouldn't take this while you're doing this. You don't do this. But when you say, well, give me the scriptures you're standing for on Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And they say, well, I do believe that. No, well, I didn't ask you what you believe. I'm asking you what you're saying, what you're doing, because apparently your behavior is not matching what you're saying. And if you're not saying anything, then you're not producing any fruit, which should match your behavior. You have a form of godliness, but you're denying the power there. I'm not denying that God has power. I didn't say that. But if you don't plug something in that socket over there, you're denying the power thereof. You are the vine, he's the branch, and God is wanting you to abide in him and him in you. But if you don't, you're just going to have a form of godliness. You're going to go through the motions. Come on. I don't deny what doctors tell me. But I found out there's a great physician in this book. Come on, I might just preach something different. Preach what I'm going to preach this morning tonight. 
I got on a horse that fits so good, I don't have to get a saddle. Amen. <laughs> But a lot of times if we don't watch it, now I'm not here to scold you, I'm here to stir you up, get you mad. Get yourself in the mirror, come on. I have pep talks with myself sometimes. People in the house walk by and say, who are you talking to in the mirror? I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> if you're talking to somebody, you better believe I am. Go outside and cut the grass. I do. I get up there. If I if my mouth starts to listen, a lot of people call nine one one, but a lot of people whine one one. <laughs> when I'm in airports, one thing I learned about airports in life is this: if you praise, you'll be raised. But if you complain, you will remain. <laughs> yeah. Come on. I'm trying to know method to go into a new land. I'm thinking, Lord, I don't understand why all this has happened. Well, look in the mirror. You know what I've done? I have broke myself almost completely of sitting around and trying to whine and complain. Now, there's times I catch myself and I stop. I say, God, I don't think I did enough to go back to the bathroom. Uh -huh. This way you mean the bathroom. I go into the bathroom. I say, Todd, look at me. <laughs> Quit looking at your eyebrow. <laughs> looking at my ears, seeing the surrounding. I do. I, I've done this. I said, Todd, look at me. Let me tell you something. You can blame anybody you want, but it starts with your mouth. Amen. Right here. And there's been times I've grabbed my tongue and I said, Todd, good for people. Me, get to them. What? Todd, I mean, hang up. Hang up. Hang up. And you think you found something right now? But how much filthier is when you walk around and go, I don't know what we're going to have for everybody. And God lives inside of you. <laughs> when I get done, I wipe my face off, put my glasses back on, and wipe the mirror from all the spit. <laughs> the best reflection you can have is reading the Word of God instead of looking in the mirror. Because you are already created God's image and after His likeness. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. God is wanting to do something in this time, time, and He needs you and I. He needs your voice in the earth at this time. God is trying to rise up people to where you're starting to proclaim in different things. You can't, you know, during COVID, I traveled a lot. People say, well, I don't know. Like, I said, you do what you need to do. But I traveled a lot because I learned to think different than the world. There's a conformity to this world. I looked up a word last night before I went to bed. I know I'm kind of a, a geeky guy, kind of. Have you ever heard of the C-I-R-C-A-D-I-A-N? C-I-R-C-A-D-I-A-N rhythms? Circadian rhythms. Now, I travel a lot. I've only had jet lag one time in all these 30 years. It was for three hours. I woke up coming back from India. I was in Yonkers, New York. Woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning, wide awake. So what did I do? I studied and iron clothes. So wide awake. Only, only for three or four hours. It, it, it's been a blessing. But the, if I'm not mistaken, the circadian rhythms, so when you travel, like, like tomorrow, I, last week I was in Kalispell, Montana preaching, just 50, 60 miles from Canada. Beautiful up there. Today I'm in Morehead, Kentucky. Next weekend I'll be in Sierra Vista, Arizona, about a 25-minute drive from Mexico, and about 20 minutes from Tombstone. <laughs> People, I don't know how you do it. Well, it's a mindset. But one thing I've learned is this, that it is a great thing to be able to adjust to this circadian rhythm because what happens is people go, I got jet lag, I can't take it. It takes them like a day and a half after they get home. And then we went three time zones. Go three continents and fly back. The reason I'm saying this is this. A lot of times, if you don't watch it, you're going to have a circadian rhythm after you get born again to where you become adapted to the... Listen to this. It's spiritual and natural. If you go overseas, let's say you go to Australia next week, and you're there for two weeks, eventually you're going to adjust yourself to that new time zone and that new way of atmosphere, the temperature changes, all this when the sun sets and the sun rises, because part of the world right now is experiencing winter when we're experiencing beginning of summer. 
But if we don't, when we do that, it's called the circadian rhythm to where it's most effective. Are y'all ready for this? Yeah. Light and darkness. It says it could be atmosphere, food, it could be stress, whatever. But it said the most, the thing that affects it the most is light and darkness. Yeah. And I, my, and I tell you, my antennas went up. <laughs> Because people who are born again, if you don't watch it, you will go, you will come out from among them, and God will call you from this out of this world because you're in the world, but you're not of it. And He said, Be not conformed to the conformity of this world, but be transformed and completely changed by the renewing of your mind. Can you put up uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 through 32? Now, I didn't plan to go this way, but it feels pretty good. These are really good notes, Mr. Oh. We get up there, and what happens is we get on fire for a while, and we start serving and doing things, and if we don't watch it, please know I'm not mad, and I'm not trying to criticize anybody. I want you to take this to yourself. Listen, you know what conviction is? Conviction it only can come by the Holy Spirit. Man can condemn you, but the Holy Spirit will convict you. The conviction of God is what we call exposing a lie by revealing the truth. Light exposes darkness. Paul said, uh, it says in Proverbs 20, 27, the spirit of the man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. That word belly is referenced, if I'm not mistaken, in John 7, 37 and 38. It says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. But Psalms 18, 28 says, David said, thou hast lit my candle, thou hast enlightened my darkness. Well, how does he do this? Well, one way is this. If you remember, he said, I've written thy word upon the tables of my heart that I might not sin against you. What is sin? Sin is simply missing the mark. Come on. And the Holy Spirit will teach you just like they do in your car. Recalculating. Rerouting. You know, repentance is a change of direction or a U-turn. But one, trans one study says it's coming back into a co-alignment with your thinking with God. Because as a man thinks in his heart. How are you going to walk to with somebody? If you're thinking, how did the outpouring of the Holy Spirit happen? They were in one mind and one accord. Amen? So what happens is if we don't watch it, we get born again. Now I'm not judging. You all are different places. I'm different places. But we're all one body. You have to sit down and get with God yourself and let Him show some light in those areas that have become dim or even dark. Paul, David said, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. So how do you write the word on the table of your heart? It's when you continuously speak it. And when you speak it, Psalms 119 begins to activate your life. He said in Psalms 119, he said in 130, he said the entrance of thy word bringeth light and giveth understanding unto the simple. He also said in 25 verses before that, in verse 105 in Psalms 119, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's why Paul, when he prayed, I haven't forgotten about Ephesians 4. Paul said this, he said, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints is. He said, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to those who believe? Amen? When he spoke about his grandson and your son, you know what rose up in me? The interest of his word rose up inside of me, and I said, Nahum 1 9. That's what I yelled out inside of me. This affliction will not come upon him a second time in Jesus' name. He don't score unless you got the ball. You, the word of God. Let, uh, let me let me say this. I'm, I got, you ever go fishing with your buddies and they don't show up and their rods are on the boat? You just throw them all out. Amen. I got three rods. And why does it seem greatness and power to those who believe according to the working of His mind and power which He brought when He raised Christ from the dead and He sent Him at His own right hand in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and dominion. Over every name that is named. 
Is it any, name any sickness you want. Oh. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. He has put all things under his feet, gave him to be the head over all things, to the church, which is his body. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. Amen? See, a lot of times if we don't watch it, we'll get to the place to where we're set, expecting God something, but we're, we're waiting for God to manifest, but He's sitting back waiting for us. God is wanting to do something more than you want to do it for yourself. We think we really know what God wants for us in our lives, but we don't. If you really read the scriptures slowly and put them in context, it really brings out a different thing than what probably we've been taught. Not that people were misleading us or deceiving us on purpose, but you know what? People all kind of, God gives me the desire of my heart. God gives me the desire of my heart. Read that real slow one day and put it in context. God, my source, God, gives me the resource, the desires of my heart. If you really love God with all your heart, it's only what you want Him to do. And He says, this is what I desire. This is my desire for you. Come on, He doesn't want us to harm. He doesn't want to lead us to different things. But look what Ephesians chapter 4 verse. Look, Therefore put off concerning former conversations of the old man, which is corrupted according to watch. What's it say? Deceitful to us. I don't know. Uh, this doesn't apply to teenagers. I was one, and <clears throat> this doesn't apply. I'm going to ask this question. No hands needed. But how many of you all were in the clothes you're wearing today had to put off something in order to put that on? That's why I excluded teenagers. They usually sleep sometimes. They what they do. So this said in verse 22, what? Take off. Put off. Right? Now look at verse 23. Well, go on. Go ahead. I think it's is that it? And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now watch this now. I'm going to show you something. Verse 22 says put off, but verse 23 says and be renewed in the spirit of your what? Mind. Now look at verse 24. And put on. So what's he saying right here is this. Let me read it this way. You can keep putting them up. Follow me. I'm going to do this translation. Verse 22. Strip yourself of your former nature. Put off and disregard your unrenewed self, which characterizes your previous manner of life. Are you talking any different, thinking any different, believing any different than we used to do? There's areas I've slipped in. I'll be honest with you. Sit down. You get used. To, you know, PG movies are now not even G. Our movies are basically just PG. Come on. We get so adapted to stuff, what happens is we become, are you all ready? We become acclimated back into a lifestyle that we were actually saved from. And we slip. These truths that we don't continue in, but remember, they slip past us and drift away. And we have a form of godliness because... It's not that we don't deny that God has the power. We deny to access it to abide in Him so He can abide in us that we can be the same. Listen, you can't do anything. Without Him, the Bible says you can do nothing. John 15, 5. He said, but if you abide in me and I in you, we are the same. But without me, you can do nothing. He said in Acts 17, 28, it's in Him that we live and move and have our being. He said in, 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 he said in another place, He said... Uh, he said, who is joined? First Corinthians, I think 6, 7, I forget where it is. He said, who is joined with God is one spirit. Come on. If I abide in Him, He abides in me. We don't understand. Abide. How many knows when you, when you go cut tree branches, they always have two ends. A tree branch always has two ends, whether you cut them or not. One is what it's connected to. It's life source. The other end produces the fruit or the result of what it's abiding in. An apple tree never has to tell you it's an apple tree. You know it's an apple tree because of the what? Apples, the fruits. So one of the ways that we're going to have to do this so we won't have this what? I say it again. Circadian rhythm. 
You could be Siri and she could be Alexa. Amen? <laughs> Listen, the circadian rhythm is when you get to the place where you are, it, it, you're going back and forth and people are like, man, my days are night and my nights are days. Well, that's what happens when you get delivered and saved and you try to go back into the world but live a Christian life. You get your days and nights mixed up because light and day are contradictive now to you. So, and that's why they said they'll call evil good and good evil. And they'll go through and they say, well, why do I need to come to church? Because I can sleep in and be like most of the people on Sunday morning anyway. I know my big brother before he passed away. Thank God he's in heaven. He said, well, that person over there does that. And I know that person's doing that. And that person's over there doing that. Why, why should I go to church? Now, I don't go to church that doesn't make you a Christian no more than going to McDonald's makes you a hammer. You fall asleep tonight in your garage, you ain't going to wake up some big luxury car or a big truck. But going to church makes you a stronger Christian. You know, when I'm home, we have I go I attend a local church. But we have a group of people called our company. This is your company here. It's not just a house of prayer. This this is the body of Christ, this company here. There's people in my church, I don't even know their last name, but the pastor says, listen, you'll do what you feel like in your heart, but we had a family in our church. They lost their home last night. Thank God they escaped with their lives, but they lost everything. We have them in a hotel right now. Anybody wants to help, help. I didn't was moved out of emotion. I was moved out of compassion. I reached up. I put money. I didn't even know their last name. But they hurt. I hurt. Why? You say, well, I, I don't know why the little toe is important. Well, tell the world class record that. Come on. What if you got an ingrown toenail that was infected in your little toe? My Lord, you start walking like a cowboy with a whip. Are you all seeing what I'm saying? We all need one another. I can't run your lane. I don't see your expected end. Your plow does not fit my hands. Come on. I can't run and press towards your mark. But we all can do it together in one accord, in one place. And as one needs another, bear one another's burdens that we can fulfill the law of Christ. We all, according to Ephesians 4, 16, it's according to the proper work of each individual part. We all have a supply. Look it up. Now, I'm not mad. But I was talking to a guy the other day that was doing some work. And I walked up to him, I stopped, and I said, hey, I want you to know I really appreciate what you're doing. He just stopped and looked over at me and said, well, thank you. I said, I was a maintenance man for five years. I said, the only time I was recognized is when something wasn't cleaned or I cleaned it and somebody went back and made a mess. A toilet was overflowing. Somebody did something on aisle three. Come on now. <laughs> or something needed, a light bulb needed changed or a fan needed fixed. Very seldom I got, thank you. It was like, hey, buddy, or you. But I knew I had a supply. And I did it as unto the Lord. But in churches, you got five, you got five, maybe three to five percent of the people. Now, I'm not saying this because you're all kind of an exception. But three to five percent of the people are doing 100 percent of the work. And you got 95 percent of the people complaining, but they don't even get, show up or give tithes or anything. <clears throat> That's why they remain. They go from one church to the other. I've been trying to teach my son stuff and different things. And one principle I learned when I was a kid was how you leave one situation and enter into the next. How you enter into the next situation is how you left the previous one. If you were bitter, you're going to enter the next one bitter. I don't care if you have a smile on your face, you feel good, you got these months, like, ooh, I feel lead. <laughs> the only lead you feel is probably a fishing sinker in your pocket, amen? <laughs> Are y'all hearing what I'm saying this morning? I love you enough. Jesus is coming. It's time to get busy. Come on. It's not. Listen. When you let, let me say it this way. When you take care of God's business, I'm telling you what. He will take care of your business. He will bless you and add no sorrow to it. Come on. And when you do it in your in God's house, when you lift up and praise and worship the Lord, and you come and hear the word, and when you take care of God's business in his house, I guarantee it, he's going to go to your house and take care of your business. But every day we've got to take up our cross, we've got to get our daily bread, and what do we need to do? We need to put off some things. 
Why? Because it's so easy to go back to the old conformity of the world. Come on, because we acclimated to the Arcadian rhythm. Kind of right in the middle of a sucking on Thank you, amen. My Lord, what is this? Peppermint? I don't want one of those. I'll spit it and hit him right in the forehead, amen. You look like a bruised Hindu, amen, right there, amen. I don't know where this stuff goes. Now look at verse 24, 23. He says, and constantly, 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 we need to know the truth and to continue in it. It's like pushing an old truck that won't hardly move. Nothing's happening, all of a sudden it'll bud. But when you get it moving, all of a sudden what you couldn't get moving, now they're telling you to hop in, and it's taking you down the road going 35 miles an hour, and you can't even push it. That's what the Word does. The Bible says you're to know the truth and to continue in it. But there's a transformation that takes place where his yoke becomes easy. His burden becomes light. Because when you get in the Word and you continue in it, all of a sudden, he says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and liberty. And I'm telling you, I want to teach you by my Spirit to do things smarter instead of harder. But quit going on the very go round of life. And it looks different for about three months, three years. But you end up right where you started. You become double-minded. And you say, no, I tried to work before. It doesn't work. I tried it for three years. And I'm telling you, I believe the Spirit of God will say, no, my words tried you for three years. You just got to get it to work. But we can't go back and acclimate to the world that we were living in. we got to constantly put things off and constantly be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Then what do we do? Then he said this in verse 24, And put on the new nature, created in God's image and God's likeness and true righteousness and holiness. Therefore reject all fallacy and done with it. Let every one of you express the truth with his neighbor. For we are all parts of one body and members of one another. When angry, do not sin. Watch this now. This is important. He says this. He says, and do not ever let your wrath, your aspiration, your fury, indignation last until the sun goes down. Leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. He, people say, well, I just don't know what to do. I've kind of messed up. Okay, well, verse 28 is a really good place. Let the thief steal no more. Rather, let him be industrious. Make an honest living with his own hands so that he may be able to uh, give those who are in need. Let no foul language or blooming language. You know one thing I don't like is people go, oh, pardon my French. You don't even know English. I'm going to tell you something. You better thank God you got good pastors because I'm not called to it. I'm telling you, the spirit of slap would come on me every week. I would have a five-fold outreach ministry. First thing, question you ask, up on the wall you go. Put spikes up there. Just hang up there. We're going to be up there Monday and Tuesday. We don't have service for Monday and Tuesday. Oh, you do. I'm on one today, y'all. You okay? Praise God. I even got time. Listen to this. Let's go on here real quick. Are y'all getting anything out of this today? I, listen, I love you. But I, I'm hearing something in here. I'm not, I'm not hearing panic. I'm not hearing panic. I'm not hearing anxiety. You know what I'm hearing? I'm hearing, get busy. I'm coming. Will I find faith upon the earth? Come on. When's the last time we've used our faith? You know, when I, 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 I'm getting back into the gym, a lot of people don't know, but I had some uh, procedures done to me and different things. People say, well, I thought you was a man of faith. I am. I'm healed. Between the amen and there it is, I don't care how it is, as long as I show up. Amen. I'm actually better now than I was. You ever take your car in because you have a shifting problem and you find out that when you get, you get it out, you got about three other things done and now your car is like, you're like, I don't even want to get rid of this thing now. I just talked about guys, amen. <laughs> okay, watch this. Verse, uh, verse 20 to 30. Leave no, uh, it says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not offend, vex, or sadden him. Watch this. Whom you were sealed and marked by his own security in the day of redemption on the final deliverance through Christ from the evil and the consequences of sin. Let all bitterness, indignation, wrath, passion, bad temper, resentment, anger, come on, quarreling, brawling, clamor, 
slander, evil speaking, abusive, blaspheming language, redneck cussing, be banished from you with all malice and spite that will of any kind and become useful and helpful and kind to one another. You know, the Lord told me one day something like this up to me, and I said, Lord, you know, I got real quiet after I had my little rant. And the Lord just spoke to me while I got quiet. He says, I said, Lord, you don't know what they did to me. I kept saying that. Lord, you don't know what they did to me. This was years ago. Lord, you don't know what they did to me. You don't know what they did to me. Lord, you don't know what they did to me. I knew it in Spanish, I would say. And he said this after I got quiet or ran out of breath. He said, apparently you don't know what they did to me. And he showed me. If you can't love them on earth, how do you expect to love them here? He said, I forgave you that big, great debt that you could not even pay. And here, you hold this. Now watch verse 32. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, passionate, understanding, loving-hearted. Forgiving, watch this now, watch this. Forgiving one another readily and freely as God in Christ forgave you. One thing I want to share with you is this. I believe Jesus is coming. It's time that we get our act together. Some people say, well, I'm a total mess. Well, that's fine. Because you can take those words out of mass and put them in blessed. Amen? Amen? But you've got to make the decision to make a U-turn and come and call alignment with God. Quit making an excuse. Most excuses are just a reason with the lies stuff inside of it. Just going to be honest with you. Come on. When's, when's the last time you stop? And, you know, if we don't watch it, we'll go to comfort food. We'll go to watch it on our show. We net Netflix and binge and do all this. But when all this COVID stuff happened, it's, it's, it was amazing how people thought because they said, well, I'm listening to the news to get informed. But I would travel all the time and just post pictures from the airplane all the time. People would write me, are you traveling during COVID? Are you, this is a pandemic. Never, never responded. It was just silence. I just kept going. Kept going. Kept going. Then one day somebody said, I understand why you're traveling. Don't you know I said, I mean, aren't you watching the news? I said, no, that's why I'm traveling. <laughs> they said, well, I'm getting informed. I said, no, you're getting programmed. Yes. You're, you're, you're conforming back. I said, your, what is it? Your circadian rhythm has now become acclimated to a new time zone or place of living from what you were called out of, you went back to you're, you're in the world, but you're not of it. He says, but be renewed by the spirit of your mind. What did Romans 12, 1 and 2 say? He said, Paul said, if I have to, I beg you. By the mercies of God, that you present your bodies unto God as a living sacrifice. You showed up here today. That's 50%. God's looking for participators, not spectators. Come on. I'm not saying it's not wrong to go and do something every once in a while. But see, God is not looking at your perfect attendance as much as He's looking at your heart. Sometimes, you know, when I go overseas, when I witness the people, they, they say, oh, what do you do? You know, they, they talk about Christian. Well, I'm a Catholic. That's, what a great, that's a great name for them both. Well, I'm Pentecostal. I don't know how you got it on the back like Presbyterian, but it's, when I go overseas, they want to know what religion I am. When I come back to America, they want to know what denomination I am. Neither one's in the Bible. We are the body of Christ. We are believers. God's not in steeples. He's in people. But you're not going to turn a resume in when you turn it to God. Don't become so acclimated to your conditions. To where what you used to believe for for your healing. That you now just. Let me say it this way. Stop and ask yourself the question. When you first got into faith. When you are maybe younger. We used to go to the throne. But now we just go to the phone. We used to go to the anointing bottle, but now we go to the aspirin bottle. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. They didn't say don't lean to understanding. 
He said, your own understanding. Because Psalms 119 says, the entrance of his word bringeth light and giveth understanding to the simple. Come on. Because his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. See, a lot of times he won't order our heads. He'll order our steps. But the key is that you walk and trust Him with all your heart. Lean not to your statement in all your ways. What? Acknowledge Him. What's that word acknowledge mean? Make witness or make proof of? It's a, conscious, it's a conscious awareness that He is with you at that moment and you're acknowledging Him in that situation. Oh, it's, it, it's easy to resist the devil. But it's another thing when you are constantly yielding. To the Holy Spirit acknowledging Him. He said, don't give place to Him. Well, who do I give place to? The Holy Spirit. An action always produces a reaction. Ask and you shall Receive. seek and you shall Amen. knock and it shall Amen. draw nigh to Him and He Amen. an action produces a reaction. People come up to me and say, well, I just don't feel God. I don't know if I'm born again anymore. I said, well, when's the last time you prayed? When's the last time? I said, well, I'll go to church. Well, God's not in steeples. He's in people. Amen? Amen? When's the last time you lifted up your hands in praise and worship and actually verbalized something with your mouth instead of singing the songs in your head? It's, it's, there, we got a lot of good note takers in church. But when's the last time you went back and looked at those notes after it was preached? I know I'm getting straight with you, but I'm telling you, folks, in here, we're living in the greatest time in history. The prophets desire to see this time. We are the ones that's going to bring this thing home. Even so nobody knows the hour of the day. Well, we know the season. Come on. What was it, 80 years and two signs took place? Come on. When Israel becomes a nation, what was the other sign? He said, this generation shall not pass away. Listen, you only got enough time in the red. Make it count. I'm not saying you have to drop your family, can't enjoy your grandkids, go to the beach. One thing I'm learning is this. Everywhere I go, I have, I don't know what this term actually means, but I keep hearing it inside of me. It's a big word for me. Conscientious awareness. Wherever I'm going, I'm trying to acknowledge him in all my ways because he said, then I'll direct your steps. And he didn't say my head. He said, Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Why? Because He knows your future better than you know your past. He's the one. Read the scripture. Read it out in, in, in context. He causes all things to work together for good. To them that love God. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my Amen. commandments. And are the called according to my purpose. Not our purpose, but His purpose. If I love the Lord and I obey His word and I'm the called according to His purpose, He said, you're not going to figure out how that black cow eats green grass and gives my milk. But I guarantee you that I'm going to work a process that you may not understand, but all I need you to do is trust me that I'm not just able and willing but I am the God that will do it in your due season. Listen, God may not pay every Friday, but He's never late when He pays. What I'm, I'm trying to tell you, recalculate this morning, reroute, get back into some things like you used to, get that fire in you, get the embers going again, and if you have to, stop watching different things. I, now, I love YouTube. I watch a lot of teachings, a lot of stuff, but it feel, feels like in the last year or so, the Lord's just been purging me down and been focused on certain things now. Because why? I want to cooperate in the time that we're living in because I believe we got just a little bit of red left so it can impact eternity. People go, well, you know, I'm kind of retired and disabled. It doesn't mean nothing to me. There was a lady, and I've shared with her, she was 77 years old. They said, I guess they had her retirement party. They said, what do you want to do? She said, well, I always want to write books. So she wrote books for 20 years. She died at 97. They went and found all the books she wrote. She wrote 400 books in 20 years. Then it was a young girl that was one of many children, about 12 or 14, I forget how many it is. You can look her up, Google it. Grandma Moses. See, I told you you're serious. Yeah. 
her and her sister, they told the story. They were real close and her dad would go out, although they had all these many kids and they were around the depression or whatever, I forget what it was. Or back when, you know, a penny was a penny. They buy one sheet of paper. He would buy one sheet of paper for a penny. They got five sheets, it cost him a nickel. And they would practice their sketching and artwork, and they were very good. Well, they both ended up getting married like the other kids. She had several, several kids. She was about 70 some years old. She came to her sister again and said, You know, my hands are, I've been sewing and crocheting or whatever. She said, I've used my hands so much that I just don't know if I can keep doing this. She said, well, why don't you go back to drawing? You love drawing. You can do that. So she started drawing and painting. To my knowledge, I can, I'll stand to be corrected. She passed away at 101 years old. She had 1,500 paintings, and they were valued, some of them, over a million dollars. All I'm going to say is this, and I'm going to close, is this. Don't die with the gifts of God still inside you. You still have something. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. Listen, people say, I'm only a teenager. No. Experience is not your best teacher. The Holy Ghost is. Amen. He'll use your experience. Some of us, come on, I'm in my 60s. Come on. I, the Lord, have you ever had somebody write to sin or you all the time? You have no reason to justify. Right when you're about ready to make an excuse to justify why you can't do something, God puts somebody in your life. And there's no argument because it's like, I got a straight flush here, you know. Unbeatable. Two doors down from me for the last, since 1996, I had a neighbor. We were just out doing yard stuff the other day. Last October, we cut tree limbs. We do all this stuff together. When I want to take a day off, she might be out with a red wagon and her big sun hat on. April, she turned 130. Don't let what you can't do interfere with what you can do. She cut her whole corner lot by hand until she was 97. And she came to me one day, she said, you've been after me for years to cut my grass. So I said, well, why now? She's 97. She said, my lawnmower died. <laughs> one thing I learned about people at 130 is they have no peer pressure. I cook for her, I try to cook for her once a week. She doesn't like it, guess what? I have become a better cook. Listen, let me, let me close with this. I hope this was okay. Listen, I, I, I'm just wanting to preach out of my heart anymore, but I do want to touch on some stuff. Come back tonight. I want to show you something, how you can literally on purpose activate the Word of God in your life. People say, well, I got Kool-Aid packages. We'll just add water. <laughs> Listen to this real quick. Are, are y'all doing okay? Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know what time it is. Let's see. Oh, we got plenty. <laughs> Get out early. Everybody's going to start working. I heard a funny thing while well, I'm turning here. I heard a funny thing the other day. They said, why do you talk to yourself so much? I said, because I always need an expert opinion. <laughs> Some people, that's the only thing they're going to write down the whole sermon right there. Oh, i got to tell the guys at the coffee shop tomorrow. <laughs> okay, let me finish with this. Listen to this. This is Ephesians chapter 4. And let me just read a few verses and we'll close, all right? I'll, I'll be done before the mint is up. Amen. Is the mint gone? Oh, it's gone. How many mints do you go? Do you have like a mint addiction? I mean, she's got a bag back there. She's like a dealer. You're like the user, amen? <laughs> this section is mint condition, amen? <laughs> I think it would be funny on uh, July 4th if you have three kids lined up and give them all different colors so their tongue would just get out be like red, white, and blue. <laughs> I don't know why. Somebody one day said something. They said, oh, are you always like that? Somebody that knew me went, every day. <laughs> well, he knows me. I flew, hey, he will, they will vouch this. I love Max airplanes. You know, I'm not real good on technology, but we were flying from Chicago, I think, down to, I forget where it was now, Nat, I don't know. 
I looked down and I thought, my Lord, I am going over whispering old crow on house of prayer, Miss Jerry in house. <laughs> Ask him. I took a screenshot. I got a, a phone I can write stuff on. I said, hello, everybody. <laughs> Please tell Miss Jerry and I said, hello. Hello, pastors. I, I, I did that. Yeah. He's probably got to say it. I flew right over. Amen. I told him not to flush me the moment until we got over, over <laughs> down near Hazard or somewhere. Amen. <laughs> it does. It's like flying over Mecca. I do. I wave. I, I put. I put. I wave. I told one person in Indiana when I flew over, I said, I was only about six miles from your house. He said, what did you drop in? I said, get in the window. <laughs> we had a lady on the plane. An uh, older lady, she was sitting there next to me. She was like, oh my God, it's just so hot. It's hot. I think we all would have said it. But she was just sitting there, oh, it's hot. I looked over. I said, well, if it would help you, I could roll down my window a little bit before we take off. And she goes, that's really funny. <laughs> then we had a lady next to me. She was terrified of flying. I mean, ter I talked to her. And we took off. She didn't know we took off. I kept talking to her. And we got up there, and she goes, oh, thank you so much. I'm not making this up, but I'll read a piece before we close. We're flying, and we're, the flight is one of the smoothest ones. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord. We were going like this, and we hit one bump, and we, we went right back smooth again. She goes, oh. she looks over at me, and I said, we hit a pothole. <laughs> she goes, oh, that was really funny. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, let me finish with this. Ephesians chapter 4. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord and treat you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling. Worthy of the calling. Worthy of the calling which you have been called. We all have been called to a ministry of reconciliation. Romans. We all have the ministry of some sort of helps. Come on. It's not the pulpit ministry. Amen. In a manner worthy of the calling you have been called. With all humility and gentleness. With patience showing forbearance to one another. Being diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There's one body, one spirit, just you were called into one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God of all who of all who is over all, through all, and in all. Can I paraphrase it? There is a God and you and I are not Him. Let's go down here we'll close with this. Verse 11. He gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some teacher, uh, pastors and teachers for the equipping, equipping of the saints for the work of the service to the building up of the body of Christ. Until we all have obtained the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Here's my three of my favorite verses. I got a lot of favorite verses. As a result, we are no longer, this is very important, as a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried by every wind of doctrine. And by the trickery of men, by the craftiness and the steeple schemings, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects of him who is the head, even Christ. Here's verse 16. From whom the whole body. How many of you here are born again? Let me see your hand. Are you all born again back here? I do things backwards. People say this is pure pressure. Are you born again? Or, okay, but well, she's like, yes. What about over here? Are you all born again? Okay. Praise the Lord. I love you. I had That's pure pressure. You shouldn't do that in church. I said, you didn't come here for bingo. I said, if you went to hell for a day and came back, you knew this was not pure pressure. Amen? From whom the whole body. Everybody raise your hand in here. This is you right here. From whom the whole body been fitted and held together by that which every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. That's why he's coming back for a church, folks, without spot parental blemish. I cannot stress it enough. Stop and take inventory of your life. What do I need to lay aside? Lay aside. Read your homework tonight is Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Lay aside every way in the sin that so easily besets you. Let us run. Jesus, come on. He, he, he endured the cross despising the shame. Come on. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Come on. Well, I'm just trusting the Lord. Well, is your mouth moving? He only watches over His Word to manifest. Amen? Jesus is coming. Recalculate. Reevaluate. 
get in a renewed mind, go back, just because you knew something once before, that might mean it's still old manna, but whatever you do, don't do what? Get back to the stadium rhythm where you're adapting back to your former nature. Come on now. Renew your mind. Get busy. Jesus is coming. And when you do, all, you, know, you know the thing I, I, it inspires me the most? I just want to hear... I, I just want to hear these words. You know what it is? Well done. Good and faithful servant. Amen. Y'all get anything out of this? Great notes. What a wonderful word, Brother Tom. Dr. Bailey. Did y'all enjoy him this morning? We get to be blessed the second time because he's going to be back here tonight at 6 30. Just before we leave, we want to bless him. What did I say? Okay, 6 o'clock. I'll be here over in that. It's 6 o'clock tonight. So come back out and, and uh, we're going to be blessed. The Lord uses him in a mighty way, you can tell. He sends him all across the country. He flies out all the time. He, as he said, he, he flew over. So he, he sent me a text that I waved at you. You need to wave back. So. <laughs> but uh, he caused such a blessing. He really is. And I uh, appreciate his ministry. How many years of full-time ministry? August 21st, we'll be 30 in this part. Traveling. Full-time traveling. Full -time traveling. Full -time traveling. 30 years. 30 years. So you see how the Lord's using him. He's out here traveling, he's, he's ministering, he's taking the gospel across the United States, he's been to other countries, and he's doing the, the work of the evangelist, as the Bible says. So, we get, this, we get the privilege, because I'm giving everybody an opportunity. The Lord says we need to do this. You know that giving is an act of worship. Giving is an act of worship. So we get a, a opportunity, but we get the blessing to give into his ministry. Now, we give, but also we sow. And we've we talked here many times. The principle in the Word of God that talks about sowing and reaping. That is the principle of God that's laid out there. And it works in the natural, and it also works in the spiritual. If you sow a garden, and you put in that garden beans and corn, if you sow it, you tend it, you put it in good ground, you know what's going to happen? You're going to reap it. Beans and corn. So, we need to sow into his ministry because he's reaping souls for the kingdom of God. And guess what? If he goes out here and he speaks like he does, and there's people who gives their heart to the Lord, and they go out and they start working, you know what? It's it's the best pyramid sales ever was. Because it brings in the harvest. And guess what? We get a part of that. We get to be a part of that. It's not, we don't have to be. We get to be. You need to think about that way. We get to be a part of this ministry. And we appreciate you coming by. Brothers, before, before you have with the, well, we'll call you Judas, he carried the bag. You can. Uh, in the book of Samuel, I was studying this, and it said this, that David sent half of his army out to fight the battle, and they won, and they brought the spoils back. And they were about ready to enjoy the spoils, and David said, no, 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 no. He said, the half that stayed back and guarded the camp, and did this, share equally with the goers and the senders. So when you send me, you share because you're, you're a sender, I'm a goer. Amen? Because that group that stayed home might be going out next. So I just want to let you know this. Whatever you give to us, we tithe off of that out of the ministry. We have, I don't know how many, I'm saying this for the glory of God. We increased during the COVID outbreak. We're up about, I'm guessing, 9 to 11 missionaries. Now, that I know personally, been there where they're at, that we take portions of that, all the offerings, and we sow into them as they're doing the work. And then I expect them to sow. We call it the twice sown seed. Don't give it to a dead seed. Give it to somebody that's like an irrigational system. Amen. So I'm just like, you know, you're not just giving to me. We're, we're, we're sowing. But you're all sharing in the same reward. Yeah. But a few months ago, Robin taught that exact oh, message. Right. Sure did. I got the notes. <laughs> Rich, you want to go ahead and bless it? Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word we've heard today, God. We thank you for that child ministry. May we receive this offering, God, and pray that it will apply it in hope, God. 
Praise the Lord. What a blessing it is. As we said, 6 o'clock tonight, if you can't come back and be with us, does anybody need prayer before we leave? Anybody need to pray? Do you? Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the opportunity to come to be together. One might have one accord to lift you up. That's the main thing that we're gathered here for today, is to honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you so much for sending Dr. Todd Bailey our way to minister to us, to give us what you have for us. Lord, you use people, you show up in people, and we're so thankful that, for that. Lord, as we go forth, Lord, let us be the lights and witnesses you've called us to be. Give us travel mercies and gather us back this evening at your point in time. And we won't fail to give you the praise you so deserve. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. May you be peace. In the name that's above every name, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. In the body of Christ said, Amen. 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 Six o'clock. See you right then. Thank you.